Hey guys, it's Kristen with IcyStarsQuilting.com and I have a wonderful project to share with you today. It's finally, finally finished. This is my Violet Craft um, review as well as reveal of the Elephant Abstractions quilt pattern. You may have caught my video a couple weeks ago where I shared the time-lapse video of the quilting of this quilt. If you haven't checked out that video, I'm gonna put the link up here so that you can go and check out that video. It is fun to see it all come together. First of all, this pattern is paper piecing. If you're not familiar with Violet Craft, she does a lot of foundation paper piecing patterns, okay? I love her stuff. This is not the first Violet Craft pattern that I did. She was actually the one that really, really got me inspired into foundation paper piecing. I saw her quilt, uh, the Atomic Starburst one, and I knew I didn't care what technique it was, I had to learn it. I had to figure it out and I had to do it and I had to do it like yesterday because I love that quilt so much. After I saw that pattern, I decided I really gotta get in. I really have to figure out how to do this because I want to make beautiful pieces like that quilt pattern. Okay, so let's do like the review process of this pattern. I'm gonna tell you what I thought about it, opinions, and if you're thinking about doing this pattern, I'm gonna give you some tips to do it as well. And then in the end, I'm gonna show you some more pictures of the final quilt and all of its glory and how beautiful it looks, okay? If you are thinking about doing this pattern, let me tell you, Congratulations, you are an absolute go-getter. This pattern, um, it's not for the faint of heart, okay? There's, there's several different stages that I went through while I was creating this quilt. It took a really long time to assemble, okay? I, I like paper piecing. I do, I really enjoy it. There's a lot of pieces to this quilt, okay? And a lot of it, while you're working on it, you are just simply kind of roboting your way through it. You're going um, fabric with the circles, fabric with the squares, putting it together, and you're making these really funky pieces that look nothing like an elephant. Um, you, I got kind of disheartened during that part where it was really hard for me to keep going because I just had this bag of fabric scraps that I carried around everywhere because you know with FPP you end up with some really awkward shaped pieces and that's just how it is and so you tend to be a hoarder of scrap and you tend to just keep on to everything that could possibly be used again and then I would just stuff it all in the bag and stick it back underneath my desk until the next time I pulled it out. So each piece per se did not take a ton of time. Um, there were some awkward angles to it so it's maybe not a good venture if this is your first paper piecing project start with something smaller okay but if you're more advanced at paper piecing and you're like man I love that elephant I gotta try to make something like that I want my quilts to be that epic then oh my god go for it go for it this is an amazing piece I say that because I have finished it and I and still on that high of finishing like a really, really amazing project. And I'm really, really proud of myself and I feel good about it. I love the way that it turned out. But my attitude was not like that the entire time that I did this quilt. <laughs> you know, there were several times where I was just like, what if I don't finish the elephant quilt? Who's gonna know? Nobody's gonna know. And then there were other times in the quilt where I just thought, you know what, no, I really need to finish this. I need to do this. And then I'll just do like some, you know, random all over quilt pattern and it's, the quilting will go by really fast. Another lie I told myself, because by the time that I got this quilt to the machine, I realized like the epicness of this quilt really called for an epic quilting design on it. Something very custom and something that I had complete control over. It doesn't have to be done that way, but if you have the opportunity and it's calling for it, sometimes the quilts make the decisions for you. So like most really, really epic quilt designs, you're gonna go through a couple different stages in this. Stage one is, wow, I absolutely love this pattern. I can't wait to go shopping. It's gonna be so much fun. I am going to be so amazing. I can't wait to get started. Then stage two hits and you're like, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? This is a lot. You know, as you're working, you get like these small wins, but the overall big win does not come until the very, very end when you have assembled all of those pieces together. You know, stage number three comes in when you say, would anybody know if I just, 
let this one go and didn't do this. Stage four comes when you're like, oh, nope, I'm gonna do this. I have to finish this. I have to finish it and I'm just gonna do it really, really fast and get it over with. This needs to be off my to-do list. Stage five for me was when I decided, nope, I need to put another 20 plus hours of quilting into this quilt to make it as epic as it needs to be. Do you need to hit stage five? Probably not, <laughs> but that was my experience personally. So my overall opinion on this is I love it. I am really, really pleased with the way that it came out. Am I going to make another one? Jury's still out. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, not for a while at least, simply because it did take a lot of time. It was very much a labor of love. While I adore Violet Craft and her amazing eye for foundation paper piecing, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and work on some different quilt patterns for right now. And then I will probably circle back to her, you know, in, I don't know, six months or so when I've kind of forgotten how hard this moment was and how hard it was to finish this quilt and probably start a whole nother new project because I do, I really love the foundation paper piecing and the amazing levels of artistry that your quilt potentially has in this. This quilt, no matter how you quilt it or how you work on it, is epic every single time I have seen it on the internet. It's gorgeous. So if you're looking for something really, really amazing and fun and just something that's going to consume your life for a while, this is the quilt you need to choose. If you're looking for something fast and simple and easy, I wouldn't go with this pattern. However, Keep it in your file for a different day when you do want something that is more involved. So without further ado, let me show you some more details on this quilt. Now, um, I don't really know what's happening this week in Texas where I live, but we got snow. So this is a picture of the finished quilt. Look how gorgeous it is. Also, note how massive it is. I'm five feet nine inches tall. This quilt is massive and I did add the extra border around the outside of the quilt so you can see it. It is gorgeous. I absolutely love the way that it turned out. I couldn't be any happier. Check out the border that I did on this quilt. It is a really really simple and classic quilting border. I absolutely love the way that it turned out. It really added dimension to the quilt. Parts of the quilt I did really really intense like specifically designed long arm quilting. Parts of it I did like a meander just to kind of do a little bit more dense quilting on it. His ears are probably one of my favorite parts just because I feel like I can see them kind of like flowing in the wind. And his toes too. I mean, God, I love elephant toes on here. It's, he's got cute little painted toenails. And another one of my favorite parts of this quilt has to be the backing to the quilt. Now I knew when I had this that this piece was going to not be something that was just going to be tossed over a bed all the time. This is a piece that is going to be hung up on the wall and it's going to be a display quilt. It's not just going to be like a um, you know snuggle up on the couch type quilt. It's not meant for that. It's too... its purpose feels greater to me. I don't know. I could be making all that up in my head but that's kind of what the quilt called for was it's going to have a hanging sleeve on the back. It's going to go on the wall. It's going to be a display quilt. I'm probably going to enter it into some shows when it's, um, I don't know, whenever we, we do that thing anymore. So I'm probably going to enter it into some shows eventually. I did the backing really, really simple. Okay. I just chose a white plain backing. When I turn this quilt around, you can see the entirety of all of my stitching. You can see like the silhouette of the elephant. You can see all the parts to it. Now, as far as the stitching goes, I did use a very cream colored thread for my bobbin, but on the top, I used a clear thread and that came with a learning curve, but I really, really love the way that it turned out. It allowed the actual quilting to shine through without the thread distracting from it. At the last minute, I decided that clear was the way to go because I wanted the piecing to show through more so than the quilting. But what happened is I actually got both of them to shine in their own way without one distracting from the other. I hope that you enjoyed this very in-depth review of the quilt as well as you know the quilting process and the pattern itself. If you have any questions 
please write them down in the comments below. If you don't follow me on YouTube, you absolutely should. I share all kinds of fun tips, tricks, and tutorials for modern quilters every single week, at least one video a week. I've been really trying to get in two videos a week. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, I, I love to share all the things that I learn with you to make your life easier so that you have the ability to create more beautiful things every single day. My name is Kristen with IcyStarsQuilting.com and I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Bye!